my dear brothers and sisters we were having a bible study on the book of uh, judges and we have reached chapter 12 of the book of judges and when we read the book of judges chapter 12 let's read it is after the victorious victory of jephthah and he came back and he had to sacrifice his only daughter and um, we heard about it yesterday and today chapter 12 was one the men of ephraim so there is another tribe when jafta and gilead gileadite the gilead tribe of gilead and jafta when they came out victorious after a war against the ammonites when they became victorious ephraim another small tribe they came complaining just as usual they are always a men of complaints only when there is a victory they come complain when they go for war they don't come and join when there is some, there are some people like this when there is some victory glory and everything they want to get, take credit but at the same time for the pain they don't want the suffering they don't want they want credit they are not happy about at last you know uh, anyway the enemy is a common enemy for both of them enemy is defeated so the job is done so they should be happy about it instead of being happy about what the job is done they are upset about they are not getting the credit of it some people are like this they are not worried about whether the job is done or not they only want the credit credit and glory out of it that is why when the after job is done there are people start come attacking each other oh i'm not glorified my name is not mentioned my i'm not in honored i'm not respected nobody informed me no one called me when you all went for these you are not i was not invited so these kinds of arguments are clear sign that you are only search for credit glory you are not ready you are not focused on be the job being done so here the job is done that's the most important thing and it is not they who fight fought it is god who fought the battle and therefore all glory should go to god but ephraimite they were not ready to accept it they wanted glory they wanted credit therefore they were upset with the gilead gileadite and jephtha and we read like this the men of ephraim was was one men of ephraim were called to arms and they crossed to zaphon and said to jephtha why did you cross over to fight against the ammonites and did not call us to go with you we will burn your house and ha- your house down over you so they were so upset and they shouted at their own brother tribe their brothers gilead and ephraim their tribe two tribes are brother tribes they were so upset because they were not invited for a war it is as if they are not invited for a birthday party it's not a birthday party it is a battle even for that they are complaining anyway they are victorious they should be happy about it because even both their common enemy is defeated but still they are not happy about their common enemy being defeated but they are not they are upset because they are not getting the glory out of it then you know the same mistake they did earlier too chapter 8 verse 13 i think is uh, chapter 8 verse 1 onwards chapter 8 verse 1 onwards we read like this book of judges then the ephraimites said to him to gile uh, to gibeon gideon the lord the lord the ephraimites said to him what have you done to us not to call us when you went to fight against the midianites and they upbraided him violently they were so upset with him so violently and ephraim uh, these um, ephraimites complained against him and then the was two we read like this so he said to them what have i done now in comparison with you is not the gleaning of the grapes of ephraim better than the vintage abizer was three god has given him given into your hands the captains of midian oreb and zeb what have i been able to do in comparison with you when he said this the anger against subsided he was so diplomatic gideon was very diplomatic and he somehow managed to handle them amicably and he did not instigate any fire in, into it he was okay with that and now let's read in the chapter 12 verse 2 
Here now the same Ephraimites, they start attacking Jephthah with the same complaint. How come you did not invite us for the battle? Then what did Jephthah do? Jephthah is not like Gideon. Each person is different. If one time you are saved, doesn't mean next time you will have the same experience. One time you are forgiven, doesn't mean you will, you will have the same experience from the people on a different occasion. So each moment we have to learn a lesson from experiences. But here these Ephraimites did not learn a lesson from their experience. Jephthah said to them, My people and I were engaged in conflict with the Ammonites who oppressed us severely. But when I called you, you did not deliver me from their hand. When I was in need of help, you did not come. I, I called you. And verse 3. When I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my hand and crossed over against the Ammonites and the Lord gave them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? So he was so upset with them. And then in what he did was for then Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. <coughs> he came and attacked the Ephraimites and the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim because they said, you are fugitives of Ephraim, you Gileadites in the heart of Ephraim and Manasseh. They were so racist. Even though they are coming from the same family, just because they are coming from another tribe, they insulted Ephraimites, they insulted Gileadites, they attacked them. As a result, they were completely defeated. Verse 5, we read like this. We read, Then the Gileadites took the forts of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. Whenever one of the fugitives of Ephraim said, Let me go over, the men of Gilead would say to him, Are you an Ephraimite? When he said, No. Verse 6, They said to him, Then say Shiboleth. And he said, Siboleth. For he could not pronounce it right. Then they seized him and killed him at the forts of the Jordan. 42,000 of the Ephraimites fell at that same and that time. The brothers killing brothers. 42,000 Ephraimites were killed just because they were seeking glory instead of giving glory to God. And then, so, and they were, since they all look like, everyone looks same. They were only able to catch in the pronunciation of the words because the Ephraimites were not able to pronounce the word Shiboleth. They only were, always say Siboleth. So as a result, he could, they could identify whether they are Ephraimites or Gileadite and they killed him. The same way, even, even the last days, passion, of, passion time, Peter was there following Jesus at a distance. And then one woman found Peter and said, you are one of them. Then Peter said, no, I don't know him. Then this woman said, your language, your pronunciation proves that you are a Galilean. So those who belong to that area, those who belong to Israel, certain tribes, their pronunciation was different. The accent was different. So that is why that lady said that you are your accent is different, therefore you are also one among them. So let's continue reading uh, uh, Judges chapter 12 verse 7. Jephthah judged six, Israel six years. So Jephthah somehow managed to bring peace in that area and he judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried in his own town in Gilead. And verse 8. After him, Ibzan, some minor prophets are mentioned here after Jephthah. The minor prophets, minor judges, minor judges, they are called, uh, one, one of them is Ibzan of Bethlehem, judge Israel. So a man from Ibzan of Bethlehem. It's not the Bethlehem where Jesus was born. There are two Bethlehems in Israel. One is in the north area, another one is in the Judah, the Bethlehem of Judah. Jesus was Beth born in the Bethlehem of Judah. But this Bethlehem is somewhere in the north, in the, in the kingdom of Israel. The whole Israel is divided into two countries, the kingdom of Judah and kingdom of Israel. So this Bethlehem is in the kingdom of Israel. So the other Bethlehem is kingdom of Judah. The Bethlehem of Judah. Jesus was born there. So here, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. Next one, verse 9. 
he had 30 sons he gave his 30 daughters in marriage outside his clan and brought in 30 young women from outside of for his sons he judged israel 7 years so he gave his 30 daughters in marriage outside his clan and then brought 30 young women from outside of for his sons so in order to bring peace in all the other clans around his israel so he took people from all of them so that there is peace among between these clans and was 10 we read like this then ibzan died and was buried at bethlehem and was 11 then another person after him alone alone the sabulonite so after him alone the sabulonite judged israel and he judged israel 10 years so that is another minor judge and was 12 we read like this then alone the sabulonite died and was buried at at ajalon in the land of zebulun another tribe zebulun and after him abdon son of hillel the perathonite perathonite judge israel so the third minor judge the hillel uh, came and he judged israel and continue was 14 he had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys he judged israel 8 years so he rode on 70 donkeys means it's not same at the same time but uh, it shows that he had a lots of wealth and he was a wealthy judge that is why it is mentioned like this and was 15 then Ab- abdon son of hillel the perathonite died and was buried at perathon in the land of ephraim in the hill country of the amalekites so this is how these minor judges also ruled and uh, died now we continue this chapter 12 is finished and we will have the chapter 13 tomorrow